Ooh-wee! We got something nice. Shout out to AZ Pro Performance. They said it'd be mid-April when I got these Dakota Digital gauges. And guess what? It is middle of March. So, under promise and over deliver with a month early on these, which is perfect timing because the truck is getting super close to being finished. It's gonna go to the body shop and get a little bit of touch up where I drop the bed. And look at all this. This should be fun. Just clean the shop up and now I got all these, uh... <laughs> yeah. So let's, let's dig around a little bit. Ooh-wee. Ooh-wee, look at this. So this is the box here, as you can see. Check that out. And this is gonna come with a couple different sensors. Also, I got the Holly EFI interface. So this is gonna plug into my Sniper EFI system and plug directly into the, into the Dakota Digital gauges. So this is gonna allow a lot of my stuff that I already have hooked up to already work directly by getting this. So I'm excited about that. Hopefully I only have to hook up a couple different things like the gas level, a um, few other things as well. Pretty in pink. Let's go. So you're probably wondering which one did he get? There's so many options. You've got the VHX, the RTX, the VHR. No, that's a that's a movie. So which one? Can you tell? I don't know. What's it gonna be? I went with the one that looks like the original, but it also has all this digital stuff. It's got the tack, fuel, oil, battery, temperature, and it all looks like the factory setup. But what's cool about this is you can adjust all the different hands there to any color that you want. The background can be any color that you want. You can have individual colors, so many different options here. So I'm going to figure out, I think I'm just going to go with the white, with the red, just to really tie in the truck, but we'll see what happens. So I'm installing these are pretty much going to be the same no matter what system you get. But with this one, again, it's going to look factory uh, with a few upgrades. The colors are going to be different. On this one here, you get the, with, um, you get the mobile app with your phone. Sorry, it took me a second to remember that. So this is the this is the RTX RTX version. So this is top of the line right here, boys and girls. It's going to be kind of hard to see here, but I just wanted to show you if you're running a Sniper EFI system, normally you have this wire plugged into this one that runs into the actual display unit. So to hook up a Dakota digital gauge, all it comes with is this jumper wire right here. So this plugs in to your carburetor and then this jump is the one that you unplugged from it and it just clicks in and then it sends this other wire into your Dakota digital gauges, that's it. Super simple, you're unplugging that, plugging those two in and running this to your Dakota Digital gauge and that's gonna pull everything from your EFI and have it on your gauges. That's gonna run water temperature, RPM, fuel pressure, all to your Dakota Digital gauges. All right now, so 
I'm gonna crawl up under here. I'm gonna get up under here with my light on and see if I can start to unplug some of this stuff from the backside without taking all these different knobs off and everything like that. So we'll see how it happens. Um, yeah. I have to go all in with this all the way down. You better get you a comfortable seat. So one tip, I'm shining that light right at you. Hope that didn't blind you. One tip, go ahead and get some tape with a tiny Sharpie or something and mark where all these wires are going to um, because on this aftermarket gauges that they've hooked up, they've got wires going everywhere. So I wanna make sure I label them all correctly. Um, hopefully the Dakota Digital will simplify this whole process because these old school gauges, they have hots and grounds running all over the place. That's the beauty about the Dakota Digital is it has one hot running to the control panel and everything else just plugs into the control panel. So yeah, let's label everything, take it off and move on. All right, I think I've got most of the stuff unhook on the back side of this and I labeled a bunch of wires man each one of these gauges here have like six wires going to it because you need a backlight you need the positive the ground then you got to ground the whole thing and man just a lot of a lot of stuff so let's let's take out this whole gauge there'll probably be a couple more wires on the back side that we've got to loosen up that I couldn't get to but we'll get this pulled out and we'll see what happens next are always a little bit tricky to get out so <clears throat> if you can take those things out pretty easy then I would encourage you to do that all right as you saw I took that um steering column bracket off and dropped it down so I can pull this dash out of here. That's one thing that I forgot from the beginning. You can see kind of the mess that they had going on back here. It's not too, too bad. Like it seemed like a lot worse as I was taking it apart, but there are quite a few just random wires. So what I'm gonna try to do is consolidate those wires, um, wrap them up, still leave what they go to, because I believe the Sniper EFI system is gonna do a lot of what all those wires do for us um, besides the speedometer. And here's the speedometer one right here. Um, we'll definitely be using that one. So I'm just gonna kinda clean all this up, make sure nothing crazy 
is going on and then find a way to mount our Dakota digital gauges back there. All right, so we have the wires organized in there, the best of my ability there. I cleaned up a lot of wires from those other gauges. There were probably 20 different wires that I didn't need, so I traced them all the way back to the fuse box, got rid of everything that I didn't need, and now it's just down. I've got these pretty tight in there, and now it's time to mount up these two. This is for the Holly system, and then this is to go to the Dakota digital gauges. So what I'm gonna do, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. I had mentioned earlier about Venata Fabrications and a few other places having a bracket that you can mount under here that has them all mounted there. Um, what I'm gonna do is what I did to my last truck. I'm just gonna zip tie this controller to this wiring harness just like that. And it'll be in there pretty tight and it'll allow me to run the wires to this without extending any wires over to the other side. So I'm gonna mount this here and I'm actually gonna use some self tappers and I'm gonna mount that up there. So just kind of like that right there, super simple. Um, and then we'll start to run our wires into all these areas and wire everything up. So we got it secured in there. I left it a little bit loose here so I can get, so I can kind of bend it up to get the wires in here to tighten those down really nicely. Okay, so we've got the guide here and we're gonna start wiring in all the things that we know we have so far. So we're gonna wire in the Sniper EFI system. I wanna do the gas level and the speedometer. Those are the things that I believe all the things on a dash will be through the sniper EFI and then those couple of things. So we'll start there, start plugging everything in that we have, and then we will test it out. So the first one I have right here is the fuel. So I'm going to go ahead and strip that. And I'm not going to cut it super short yet. because I don't want to cut it sh too short. Here's the fuel input signal right here. So we're just gonna unscrew that really good. Usually what I want with these wires is enough to go in there, but not any wire sticking out of the plug. There we go, perfect right there. good okay this one that's hanging out is going to be next this is our this is our speed I'm gonna go ahead and cut those strip them speed is right there it says ground signal power and it's the same same colors here so let's 
So we've got fuel, we've got speed, we've got to do our ignition, 12 volt constant, and then our ground for the main hub here. Let's go ahead and hook in our holly. So we've got the input already connected in to the holly, and then there will be a connection here to in here. Plugs into the holly, and then this is gonna plug into the BIM here. Just like that right there. We'll take these wires. And I'm just going to put them underneath for right now. And once we have everything connected up, I'll make sure everything is zip tied and mounted nicely, which it sets pretty good like that right there. Okay, so I marked oil pressure here, and then I also marked power. So this line was going to power. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to get my tester and I'm going to hook the battery back up and just see if this line has constant power or if it's ignition power. And whichever one it is, I'll hook into this and then we'll run another line down to the fuse box for whichever one this is not. Get the switch screwed in there. We're gonna plug it in right here. It's gonna go into the it's gonna go into the switch input right there. Last but not least is this display cable. This is gonna plug straight into this. Like that. And then into the back of this plugged in so I hope you can see it right there I'm gonna turn on the ignition Okay, I saw the fuel go up to three quarters of a tank. I hope that's correct because that's like $30. So this is important because I'm running a BIM for the Holly. That's why my temperature gauge wasn't working is because it was still on sensor. So we're going to choose BIM right there. I'm going to set the warnings while I'm doing it. Look at that. You saw that kind of jump up. That's what the warning looks like. Let's scroll through and see what these are. Okay. Unit, Fahrenheit. Okay. That's it for water. Looks like. Oh, here's, this should be fun. This is uh, some themes. So we've got a day and night mode here. Oh, this should be fun. Check this out. You've got fire and ice, wild rose, vivid orchid, steel blue, ice and fire, wild aqua, emerald, mint green, yellow flare, incandescent, 
ice white. I love that one. That's the one I'm going to go with right there, but I'm going to cycle through the rest of them. White hot. Ooh, I kind of like that white hot too. Man, that fire and ice though looks pretty sick, doesn't it? All red. I'm going to I'm going to be going back and forth on that one. Going to displays now. So the info pop up. So it gives you each section of the screen what you want on it so what i want on that top left corner so as you saw through all that I, what i did is i set my oil pressure water temperature volts and clock i just like to have all that information right there i've got speedometer rpm here um my gas here but I like to have those because that is the just the running function of your truck uh, to be able to monitor their, that at all times will be helpful. So I'm going through the gear now. I'm not sure what that is. Um, okay, there we go. Park, reverse, neutral. Don't have an overdrive yet on this. So park, reverse, neutral. All right, so I believe I have the tack, water temperature, fuel, pretty much everything working. I can't do the speedometer right now because it's like nine o'clock at night, but the only thing that wasn't showing up was the oil pressure. And so what I have to do is the kit comes with one of these sensors. I've got to swap out the old oil pressure thing that's right there in the middle of the screen with this sensor right here and then plug that in and put the wire in through the cab hook that up and I believe I'll have every single one of the things on the Dakota digital showing and then I can install the dash I don't want to put it all installed back on the dash until everything works so I'm going to swap that out All right, so all I had left was getting the oil pressure sensor working. So I have to install just this. I just have to pull out the old oil pressure sensor and put this one in there and then plug it up and that'll be all I have to do there. But it's not as simple as I just made it seem. Check it out. This, this is the old one. That's why it wasn't working. So I tried to just take this end piece off and use that little that little 45 to plug into and look what happened. Oh, it broke off level with the engine. I about freaked out. You can kind of see that hole right there. That pipe thread that pipe thread was stuck down in it and I couldn't get it out. I moved it a little bit with a flathead screwdriver, but I went to Lowe's 930 at night and got one of these pipe nipple extractors. And it fit right in there, pulled that thing out with three small turns. Lifesaver, 10 bucks for a whole set of these. Man, that saved my whole night. This is the last little sensor I have to put on here to have all the gauges on the Dakota Digital RTX gauges working. And I was that close to a catastrophe. So let's get this oil pressure sensor installed, get it plugged in, run that to the dash, and install our gauges back into the dash. So we want to take the old gauges off of our cluster and then we're going to install the Dakota Digital on those.
there should be little grooves that these gauges will slide into. Make sure they're in those grooves. All right, so we have the bottom of the steering wheel bolted back in. Check your tilt, make sure everything still works. Everything looks good. So now I've got a couple more wires in the bottom that we didn't hook up. So I'm gonna tidy everything up from the bottom and then I'll kind of give you a, a glance at what that looks like. So I'm gonna try to work with my hands for right here, but I wanted to give you an idea. I downloaded the Dakota Digital app onto my secondary phone here. So I'm recording myself on the phone so you can see real time results as I'm pressing the buttons here. So if we go to setup, it's gonna scan for the Dakota Digital gauges. It found the one that I have installed there. And what I wanted to show you first is the lighting, because this is what's really cool. Um, what you can do is go to different themes. Let me move this up a little bit so you can see, and then I'll move it as I change through them. You have white hot, which that's kind of what I have now. Ice white. It's got that nice little blue tone to it thing here incandescent so if you want your gauges to kind of look like the old gauges with that incandescent look we have yellow flare that's one of the brighter options mint green emerald wild aqua ice and fire steel blue vivid orchid wild rose fire and ice so as you can see what's really neat about this is you can change the needle color the actual number color and the backlighting that's behind the needle and you can choose on here if it comes on during the day during the night or both and then you can apply the changes so i like the white hot right here kind of matches the truck, the white, black, red, um, apply those changes. Another option besides the themes is you have customize. This is what's really neat about this. This is custom palette. So you get to choose the face gauges, the face needles, the display labels, the display gauge, and the display grid. So a lot of different options that you have on this. So just for an example, if you went to the face needles and it'll give you, you can see in the background how it's changing. So you can see on the background there, those face needles are changing to all the different colors. And then if we go to display labels, as you can see on the guide, that's the label units right here. 
So those are on the far left. As I flip through here, you can see how those change. Then you have your display gauge. And that's kind of, you can see the volts there change to yellow, the odometer yellow, so that's all those things. You've got your display grid. So that is like the boxes. You can see the crosses. Um, let me change it to a color that you can, yeah, there you go. You can see it's right there above my thumb. And again, it'll show you kind of a guide there. Um, then you have your face gauges. And that's, this is where your numbers, everything is changing ton of different colors there as well so you can make these any way that you want this is really neat so if you have a wild color scheme on your truck you can make it match if you want something simple you can do that um, you can go simple with a little pop of color to kind of coordinate the outside maybe you've got a accent color that you really like um, so yeah that's one of the options since we have this app pulled up here what I wanted to do is go ahead and walk you through that a little bit too so if we click speed we can auto calibrate speed on here that's actually what I did on this truck just to test it out um, once you know where a mile marker is you can actually take off from one area go exactly one mile and then click um, select and then it will auto adjust your speedometer depending on that mile radius no clue how that works um, but awesome technology i did that the very first i got the truck um, just to make sure it was right and then i downloaded a mile per hour app on my phone and it calibrated perfectly so you can set your service how many miles you want your service to and it'll pop up a service um, alert on the left here. Your signal, is it a sensor? Is it a BIM um, output? Your TAC, you can have the input type, 12 volt, five volt, or a BIM cylinder update rate, slow, mid, fast. That's how fast that your tack goes up and down and you can change your shift light. We already went through, let me see, gauges. You can have your low warning for your voltage and your high warning. Your water input, mine's on a BIM through the Sniper EFI, but if you don't have a sensor through that, then this kit actually comes with the water sensor that you just plug in and you just choose sensor there. You can have a high warning. Um, your oil, you have an input and a warning. My oil, you saw in the video, is by the sensor that they sent with the kit. And then you can click your fuel setup, put in what kind of fuel input that you have. You can range learn so the same way the speedometer works you can move your gas you can start from an empty tank and then move all the way up to a full tank and it will learn when you're out of gas and when you're full of gas so that's a really neat thing that you can do your bim you can search for it um, this one since i connected it automatically through the Sniper EFI system, it connected automatically. If you're running an LS motor, then you can plug the OBT2 sensor in there and it will uh, pull all that information directly to your Dakota Digital gauges. Just need the OBD2 sensor connector. Um, if you need one, I have an extra one now. If you'll contact me, usually they're a hundred bucks. I'll cut you a deal on one. I have an extra one that I didn't use on my last build. So display, this is information pop-up, your screen indicators. Everything on the left side over here where my pinky is, you can choose all four of those boxes, what you want them to have. 
you can preset your odometer, you can have your warnings. It comes with a sound, like a little speaker that plugs in. That way, if any of your alert sound, it'll do a chime through that to alert you. But all this is available on the app. So that's only for the RTX system. Um, if you go with any of the other system, the VHX and some of the other ones, it doesn't come with this app. You can still do everything through that little clicker right there where my pinky is. You can still do everything through the clicker. It just takes longer. Um, and this, you can really do everything that you need through your phone and not have to worry about clicking through everything. I started recording this video a huge storm started outside so if you hear the rain and the wind but you're watching this video that means I survived through it so praise God for that but there's a few things that I wanted you to be aware of when you buy the Dakota digital kit no matter what kit it is it's gonna come with a lot of the sensors that you're gonna need to make your things work so if you are wondering man when I buy the Dakota digital gauges do I have to buy all the sensors will my factory sensors work what do I need to make this kit work? Well, hey, rest assured, it's gonna come with all the things that you need to get all your major sensors working. One of the first things is you've got your water temperature gauge. So this is gonna plug in to either your intake manifold or in the side of the block where your water temperature is. So that is just gonna screw directly in to your factory spot if it's a different size it comes with a lot of these different adapters and stuff to adapt it down to the right size it's going to simply screw into the hole and then it's got a it's got a plug on it and this plug is going to plug into there and you're going to run this all the way to your dakota digital gauges and run the two wires into the main box and they're going to be labeled water temperature that's it so water temperature is done. One of the things that you saw earlier in my video is the oil pressure sensor. So you're just going to take out your factory oil pressure sensor and then either use an adapter or it may hook directly into your um, factory connection. Plug that in, screw it in as simple as you saw that I did it, screw it in, plug it in, run it to the Dakota Digital. Again, super simple, unscrew the things, don't strip them out or break them off like I just did, but unscrew those, plug it in, then you got oil pressure. So next comes your speedometer. And if you've got a 350 turbo, or if you have a 700R4, if it's a manual um, cable driven, it's gonna have this connector that connector is going to screw into the side of your transmission and it has a sensor on there. This again is going to connect in and then you're going to run this wire. It's the three wires that you saw that I hooked up into your Dakota digital box. Plug those three wires in. You're going to have a speedometer. So it's that simple again, just plugging, running the wires into your main brain box. So for all those LS swap guys, this is what you're gonna need. This BIM one, two box here. So what this is gonna allow you to do is plug in your OBD2 sensor directly into this. This box comes with this plug. So this plugs directly into this. This goes to the OBD2 and it pulls all your information from your computer. So that's almost everything you need on an LS swap. On my last truck on blue, I plugged this in and I had almost every single thing working on that dash within this. Um, speedometer, temperature, shift, gauges, shift, all that stuff worked from this. So it's $99, I believe is what I gave for this, but it saves all the time of hooking up all those different connectors. So if you need an extra one, seriously, I've got this one, I'll hook you up. Just reach out to me on Instagram, simple.c10, or comment. Let's get connected. I can hook you up with that. So that's about it when it comes to the major things that you're going to need to make sure your engine is uh, operating properly. 
Now this has the capacity to do a lot more than just those basic things though. You can plug in a cruise control, your, your blinkers, bright lights, headlights, all that kind of stuff. Anything that you want, it's capable of doing that. And in the directions, it has how to do all those things. But when I first started on this truck, I just wanted to get my main things where it could track. And then from there, I can always add on extra stuff. Hey, so I know that I kind of sped through a lot of this. I showed you some of the specifics. I know with the Sniper EFI on mine, it seemed a little bit more simple, but with those connectors and all the things that comes with the kit, it's really not that hard for you to hook this up to. You know, it took me about four hours-ish to hook up uh, just the Dakota Digital. Of course, you gotta take out your old gauges and do all that kind of stuff. And it would take you a little bit longer if you had to hook up all the connectors, but it's a weekend project. You can have all your gauges working. Don't stress out about it if you're just thinking, man, it's a lot of money. I don't know. I don't want to mess it up. Follow the instructions. Take your time. Watch this video. See how I did it. Um, this was the second one I've ever done. It went really smoothly. And you can do this too. It's no issues. If you have any problems, reach out to me. If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button. Follow my channel. Thank you for all your support. I really appreciate it. Thanks for those that's been waiting on this video and had patience. I appreciate that. Um, and I hope to have a lot of videos coming soon. I'm still looking for my next project truck. So if you know of anything from that fifteen dollars to $20,000 range running, driving project, patina preferably. I'm tired of messing with this uh, slick paint. So, hey, hit me up like this uh, channel, do all the things, and I really appreciate it. Peace.